Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds hanging out with this nerd. I'm Nerdarchy Ted. And today we got a GM 911 for you from Michael. Uh, basically, we had a case of the overbearing boyfriend. <laughs> so the uh, you know the GM 911. Before we get into it, why don't you guys jump down to the description below, sign up for the Nerdarchy the newsletter. It's a great way to get gaming tips delivered straight to your inbox, as well as learn how to game with us. So essentially, uh, player asks DM, "Hey, I got, I got, I want to bring my girlfriend into gaming. Awesome, you know, get your, get your girlfriends, get your boyfriends, get them the game with you. It's a great Absolutely. idea, uh, and then it doesn't, you know, interfere with your gaming plans. But you the, always want to share the hobby, right? And bring new people into it. But the problem is, this boyfriend keeps telling her how to play the game, right. not." As in, in an instructional, instructional way, but what to do. Right. And when he's not busy bossing her around... He's bossing the rest of the table around. And apparently he's related to like everyone but the GM, <laughs> or is dating them. So you got the you got the GM, this one player, his girlfriend, his sister, and his cousin. And that's that's the group. So I see like two different ways to go about it. One mm -hmm. is like the fight fire with fire and be immature. Um, uh, I've been known to be immature, and um, <laughs> uh, and the other is to like sit down and talk to him. But he, he's saying that he, he, they they've talked to him over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you could you could actually maybe circumnavigate this player and talk to the girlfriend mm -hmm. and like find out like how she feels about it. You know, because because they already know it's bugging all the other players. Right. You know that that's our Michael's already stated that fact, so like have a conversation like um, with the with with the girlfriend and find out like how she feels about it. Yeah, I, Does I would, it bother her? I, I would sit there and I would find out like what is causing the hesitation in her deciding what to do. And I don't she, know that there's a hesitation though. It, it I mean, that, that, like... that's that's kind of what 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 I've what I've got. It comes to her turn, and you know. In, in her in moments of indecision, even if it's a split second, he's like, well, you know, you need to attack that goblin or, you know, wh whatever whatever the actual situation is. Um, but find out, you know, whether she's trying to employ tactics, whether she's un unfamiliar enough with the rules. I mean, this game's been going on for a little while. Um, but find out what the hiccup is and I, see. I, I really don't think that's the problem though. I think this dude is just kind of being a douche <laughs> and he's bossing her around. He's telling other players what to do. You know, and, and, you know he might just be a problem player. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he might actually just be happy that he's got his girlfriend there and to boss her around all the time because maybe he knows like she'll put up with it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, compared to the other players who you're getting angry and right. and even you know, told player, like you know, told him off and stuff like that. And like we said, these are all his like family, his cousin, right. his sister. Um, you know, if and and if the GM doesn't feel uh, comfortable approaching the girlfriend, maybe have the sister a approach you know approach the girlfriend right. and talk to her. It might be easier that way too. So the, the another another uh, option, I, it's it falls into the the more heavy handed style. And yeah, I would you know address the group and say, look, you know, you guys. We, we Wait, I know what you're gonna say. Every time that player goes to do something, someone else in the group tells him what to do or tell him what he's doing is wrong. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't gonna go that way. I was. I was gonna go with the the literal, you know, the, the whole hand of God technique, um, where it's uh, every time, like to, to tell tell the group so that you're not singling out the player. That it's like you you are your character. Any time you're stepping on someone else's turn... That's your action. You can either say that's your action, or your next roll is a one, or just a straight-up miss. And, you know, players get real serious when you put in-game effects to the out-of-game performances. It, it's really heavy-handed, and a lot of GMs can't stand that kind of thing. But players respond real quick when you do that kind of nonsense because it's you know not only is that going to affect your you know your player's action your player's turn, but it's going to affect everyone because well what if you're the healer what if you're the damage dealer and you're not you're not fulfilling your role because you keep screwing up because you're talking out of game. Well, or or instead of doing that, what about the anti inspiration? Like, you know, like, you know, you start handing out the reverse inspiration and just use, like, since I think they're playing 5th edition Dungeons mm -hmm. & Dragons, you know, use, like, okay, instead, like, we give a gold coin on our table mm -hmm. of play, play money as, as inspiration. Well, 
yo, you know, maybe the DM starts sitting the, you know, black coins in front of people nice. when, uh, you know, or, or a different colored marker in front right. of people right. going, yeah, you're going to have disadvantage on the next thing you do. <laughs> that, that's a, that's a, a good, uh, a good mid midline. You know, it's not quite as harsh, but you know, it, it still can, still can be bad. Yeah, or like if um, just depending on like what they're telling the other person to do, mm -hmm. you're just like, well, then your character's actually telling them what to do, so you have to give up a bonus action right. to direct them, or you, you know, you can do things like that. I mean, I don't really like it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, because this really isn't an in-game issue. This is an out-of-game issue. This is right. This that is a social thing. Like maybe your group needs a social contract now. Mm. You, you know, like that's something to discuss if it hasn't been done before. Um, and and yo. Know, what are you going to do you know when people breach the social contract then that could be the where you move to anti-inspiration right or, you know you could something you could have the let's revisit session zero and have a have a sit down you know before you start the next session and you talk about the the situation as a group and you know you put forth the idea of the social contract you say okay well you know here here's my idea of how i'm going to handle you know this negative situation that's happening you know either with the, the loss of action or the the anti-inspiration if you will you know oh here's your disadvantage chip um he has the player to leave but leave his <laughs> keep his girlfriend invited to the table i don't know uh, it, you know it really is tough when you get into the the social uh, the social aspects of the game and just people interacting with each other um because i mean you know at, at the end of the day you guys we all have to get along and and play this game with each other and it really only does take like one bad apple to mess everything up right. for everybody and like depending on what kind of relationships are there already um it, I, it, it's not stated, but I can only I can only imagine that this was an ongoing problem, or or the fact that having someone that they can regularly boss around has aspirated the problem. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really know, um, but you know I I don't really there's not really a whole lot of things you can do. Right. At the end of the day, the most drastic thing you can do is be like, we don't really want to game with you anymore. Right. So so your your options you know really are. Kick, kick the player to the curb and game with with the, the rest of the group. Most people, you know, aren't aren't ready or willing to go to that to that aspect until everyone's fun has been destroyed. So use that as a last resort. Um, you can continue conversations with the player and see if there's anything that you know can be done to resolve it without any kind of in-game detriment. You can just you can put forth the the ideas that we talked about. You know the the loss of action, the the anti inspiration, the uh, here's the disadvantage chip. Um, you know you can talk to the other players at the table and see if you can bolster their confidence to just tell him to back the f off. Um, you know not everybody has got to have the the backbone to be able to do that. If this other guy is that strong of a, a personality, you know so. If you guys out there have any other suggestions about uh, what Michael can do to, to help kind of save this D&D &D group before it falls apart, put it in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, even subscribe. You can hang out with us over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.